Welcome to this episode of the Inspirational Creatives podcast, episode 290, brought to you by the Inspirational Creatives app, which you can now find on your favourite smartphone app store. To celebrate six years of this podcast, you can download the Inspirational Creatives app to access all of my content every single episode since this podcast began in 2014 and for free. To take your live creativity and profession to the next level, connect directly with me and my content by searching for the Inspirational Creatives app on your favourite smartphone app store. Welcome to Inspirational Creatives. I'm your host, Rob Lawrence. Join me every Friday as I chat with successful artists, producers and creative entrepreneurs who share powerful stories and strategies. They can help you to create the life that you want. Listen each week as these inspirational creatives show you how to take your creativity to the next level. You'll learn how to create a sustainable business that inspires others and gives you the financial freedom and lifestyle that you want. Thanks for listening. Make sure you sign up at inspirationalcreatives.com to get free exclusive bonus material. And now on with the show. Rob here and welcome to this short action episode on inspirational creatives about spotting a gap or new opportunity in your market. Today I'm going to share with you the story and wisdom of parents Emily and Paul who taught us in the last episode, 289, how your next best opportunity could be a gap in a market you already know. I'm also going to share with you the wisdom of Business Growth Club mentor and podcast host Neil Foley, who I interviewed in episode 287 and the short action episode 288. Now, if you remember, in episode 288, we discussed why now is a great time to get working on a new idea you may have for a creative business, project or venture, and why you shouldn't worry about the competition. One of the big takeaways for me creating that episode for you was that if you have a desire, an idea that you want to start exploring or pursue, there is no better time than right now to start asking questions and doing some research. Here's a reminder of Neil's wisdom from episode 288 which leads us neatly from motivation to today's topic about spotting a gap in the market. So what are you waiting for? What's the point in waiting? If you've got this desire, start exploring, start learning, start dipping your toe in, start talking to people. Because what's the worst that can happen? This actually doesn't work. Uh, Or you get feedback that says, you know what, I'm not sure that's quite right. What you will find is somebody else has done it already. Uh, but don't get put off by that because the world's big enough to cope with all of that. But you need to know if there's a, you know, this niche, that, this idea, is there a market in it? Because it's not just about finding a gap in the market. It's about making sure there's a market in the gap. Maybe nobody's done this before for a very good reason. They might have missed it. Chances are there's some things you hadn't thought of. Neil suggested in episode 288 that there is never a right time to test out and get started with researching your new idea. It's not always about spotting a gap in the market. Sometimes it's about checking to see if there's actually a market in the first place. And if not, why not? Maybe now is a great time to explore putting a new product, service or idea out into the world because you've spotted something others haven't. Remember, there are new opportunities every single day. There may be a chance that there isn't a market for your idea or the market isn't ready. And that could be worth qualifying early on before you start putting your eggs into that basket. In the last episode, I interviewed parents and ex-teachers Emily and Paul, who founded the online membership community Parent Guide to GCSE, having spotted a sizable gap in an already established large market, where they were able to turn their talents and years of experience into something unique for parents who were in need of support of helping their teenage children prepare for school exams. In episode 289, Emily shared their light bulb moment with me. And I had this light bulb moment. Who's helping the parents. There's a massive millions of pound industry supporting students, you know, revision guides and tutors and all sorts. But as a parent, you just want to help. That's that's what you want to do. You hate to watch your child struggle through stuff. You want to be able to help. But how do you help? I mean, we know GCSEs and A-levels. That's what we know. And as teachers, we got that. But Mm. at the same sort of time, our boys were going through their GCSEs. And it's a very different thing when it's you're on the other side, when you're the parent rather than the teacher, because it's not all about your subject and they're your kids. So let's face it, they don't want to listen to you because you're the parents. So you can't possibly be right. Whatever it is, the sky can't be blue. The grass can't <laughs> be green because you said so. And oh, and so we thought there, there must be something. We must just have missed it. So we did lots of searching. And there are people who 
do help parents a bit, but mostly they help students. There was no one who was just saying, look, parents, if you want to understand what's going on so that you can help them, then we can help you do that. Because as we say, knowledge beats nagging every time. And uh, that's how the Parent Guide to GCSE was born. It's all about doing a bit of research first. For Emily and Paul, they followed their curiosity and they spoke to the community. They did their research as parents, looking for support, and they did their research in an almost entrepreneurial fashion, finding out what the gaps were, as well as what the market needed right now. Emily and Paul also revealed in episode 289, where you can hear our longer conversation, that the model that they chose to pursue was an online community membership, because they realised that these parents needed a lot of help, and there was nothing really available to support them in the market. Leaning upon their teaching background to learn more, they developed something unique. As teachers, the, the most we've ever had to sell is, you know, algebra to teenagers. That's really it. And it's it's been quite a big jump. So um, I've always been a bit of a, a bit of a nerd, a lot of a nerd. And I, I like to dabble in making websites and things in my spare time. So that kind of side of things wasn't so bad. Not had any trouble with the tech side of things. But the marketing and the sales has been a whole new world for me. So I have basically read pretty much every business book on the planet at this point Mm -hmm. and just absorbed all the knowledge and taken far too many courses spent a lot of money on my education to make sure that I can do this right and that I'm creating the best possible customer experience because with a membership what you want is your members to be so deliriously happy with you that they stay for as long as humanly possible which for us at the moment is from year 10 through to year 13 and uh, and then they refer you to all of their friends because you did an amazing job. So that is kind of the ideal marketing plan is to make our members super, super happy, which I think we're doing a pretty good job of, according to the various messages we've been getting. So, yeah, it's it's taken a while to get there, though. It's There's been a big confidence issue because I don't feel confident selling and I've had to make a bit of a mental leap from I'm not trying to sell people stuff. I'm trying to help people and when I'm describing what we do, it's so that I can help more people. It's not so that I can sell things and make lots of money because that's not what it's about. So long as we can afford to live in our house and feed our children, we're all good. We're, we're very much all about how can we help people. So it's the exact right thing for us to be doing. And we both absolutely love it. Emily reveals that whilst they didn't have a business background or any business experience, that didn't stop them creating something special for an already established market. A service that provides an exceptional customer experience not being done elsewhere. So my questions and thoughts for you today are, which markets and communities are you interested in serving? Who do you care about? And what is it that people need in those communities that they aren't getting yet? What could you offer that could be unique and compelling that could fill a gap in that market? And what could you do today to find out if there is a market in that gap that you've spotted? Thanks for listening today. Remember, you'd be very welcome to join me and my small yet growing community of inspirational creative listeners in our own app. We're beginning to connect now through the dedicated Inspirational Creatives app, which you can download onto your smartphone right now from your favourite app store. You can download it for free and hear previous episodes at your leisure. That's almost six years worth of content and nearly 300 episodes. The app is where I also share some exclusive content with you too. I hope you enjoyed Neil, Emily and Paul's wisdom today. Good luck finding a gap in your market. Let me know how you get on by emailing me at rob at inspirationalcreatives.com and I'll chat to you soon. Thanks for listening. Nothing beats the stories and advice of an expert to help you raise your creative game. I would love to know what you thought about today's episode, so don't forget to subscribe in iTunes where you can rate and review the show. If you like this episode, I invite you to share it on Facebook or Twitter with the one person you know who will benefit from the wisdom shared here today. You can find the show notes on inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash podcast. If you have a burning question or a great idea for a guest, head on over to inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash contact where you can connect with me there.